Early in the morning, moms take their daughters to kindergarten or school, while they themselves head over to work or some other business. In every store and office and out on the open street, there are only women. Nowhere in the world is there a single man, yet the place is full of children. This is what things look like in the society of the desert grassland whiptail lizard. Of course, they don't have cities per se, but the whole species consists of exclusively females. They reproduce with the help of the so-called parthenogenesis, which means virgin birth. It's not only these lizards that can do this, but others as well. In 2006, a Komodo dragon named Flora from the Chester Zoo gave birth to cubs without mating with a male. This was the first case of such a thing among monitor lizards in captivity. Thelma, a female reticulated python, spent her entire life in the Louisville Zoo and never saw a male. In 2012, she laid six eggs that hatched into healthy snakes. In this case, it was the first recorded virgin conception in the whole species. Then the zebra shark Leonie joined this club of virgins. She birthed two cubs in 2016. All babies born this way are genetic clones of their mothers. Except for the lizards, they even have their own interesting bit here. It turns out that cloning is a completely normal way of continuing life on Earth. For plants, this is generally pretty commonplace, as it is for dozens of different animal species. But is it possible to create your own human clone? And will it refrain from destroying the universe? Clones would allow us to cheat a little and be in two places at the same time, or get closer to eternal life. When you get to be too old or too sick, you can create a replica. Something else similar comes to mind when thinking about clones. There's mosquitoes trapped in amber. This is just a bit closer to reality, but it is still a ways from the truth. Modern methods of cloning are more akin to a biology lesson than some fantasy action. Scientists have already succeeded in creating copies of different animals, but they've got some bad news for the dog lovers. As it turns out, some creatures are easier to clone, while others are more difficult. A mouse is easier to replicate than a rat, and a cat is easier to replicate than a dog. It's for this reason that Genetic Saving, which was an unusual company that created clones, was closed. Rich people who had lost their pets were willing to pay $50,000 for an exact copy. This is how six cats were raised. Then the price was reduced to $32,000. But the problem was not the cost. They simply couldn't clone dogs. And primates, hence you and me, are even more difficult to recreate. Are you still imagining some human body coming from a printer? Well, you'll be disappointed to find out that in reality, everything happens quite differently. Even if you could create a human clone, it would be a newborn baby. The technology needed to grow a functional adult body, unfortunately, does not exist. The only way to create a replicant is to actually spawn it. But you've made up your mind to make a copy of yourself, eh? All mammals, starting with the legendary sheep Dolly, have been cloned in one particular way. The same will apply in your case as well. To do this, they will take an egg and remove the nucleus from it, where all the information from the biological mother is stored. In its place, adult cell data from all your DNA is put in. Then everything takes place as it usually does during artificial insemination. You'll have to make multiple attempts and most of the eggs will die, but one will survive and begin to develop. There's the possibility that it will separate, like what happens with the birth of identical twins. Then you will get not only a clone of yourself, but also a clone of your clone, too. Everything will take place naturally, so the replica will be born nine months later. Can you see the resemblance? Yes, when he grows up, he will look very similar to you. But first off, a lot of time will pass, and you'll probably grow old. Secondly, even visually, it may not be an exact copy. In the DNA molecule, some genes are conditionally turned on and others are turned off. During the development of an embryo, the initial settings may change. For example, the first recreated cat had a different coat color. Genetically, it was identical to the original, but visually it was a different animal. Removing and inserting a new nucleus into an egg is like programming. Nature works on the original for months or even years and we force the cell to be reprogrammed in a maximum of a few hours. This leads to the appearance of random errors in the code, that being the DNA. Errors in copying accumulate over time, and sooner or later they lead to serious failures. Therefore, your clone will have health problems. Most replicants will die before birth, and others almost immediately after birth. But even if the clone survives, its prospects in life are not the brightest. Back in 1999, French scientists created a cow replica. The calf that was born seemed perfectly normal until it died at two months of age. It turned out that it had practically no developed lymphatic system. This case proved that coding errors can affect the body in the future. Clones now and then display some sort of deformation or disease. Some scientists believe that the cloning process itself violates the laws laid down by nature. 
but this is not always the case. In 2013, the La Dolfina team won the Argentine Triple Crown in polo. This is the most prestigious series of awards in the world in this sport. Founder and team leader Adolfo Cambiaso changed horses several times during the game. Surprisingly, the mares were all named Quartetera and were replicas. Cambiaso not only cloned his favorite horse many times, but also created a whole team from its clones. They turned out to be so healthy and strong that for almost 10 years they brought Cambiaso victories on the world stage. Thus, your clone might also survive, though it's less likely than a horse clone and it may even be perfectly healthy, at least on the outside. The child will grow up, becoming an attractive young man or girl, and you'll have aged 20 years. And not only will it be sad for you to look at your younger copy, but they won't even be like you at all. Not counting external resemblance, his or her character and habits it will be that of a different person. Perhaps he will also play a musical instrument, like you, but on a different one. Or she'll love ice cream. However, it will be a different flavor. The clone will most likely have different musical preferences and political views, because the same genes do not guarantee identical development. In addition to genetics, a person's formation is greatly influenced by the environment. And now your adult copy, which turned out to be a stranger, goes on to create his own family. And from that moment on the slow Armageddon will begin. The reason for the extinction of mankind will be your clone. Mistakes during the reprogramming of the egg nucleus led to genetic mutations. One or more of them are associated with the so-called germ line. These are changes in germ cells at the DNA level that are transmitted to offspring. The germ line mutation is in your clone and will appear in his children. Toddlers can become terminally ill, become psychopaths, or perhaps inherit many other crippling features. They are certainly unlikely to have superpowers. The situation may not seem particularly dangerous so far. It's just one clone in a sick family, right? But what if you look at it from a different position? Every 200th man on Earth is a descendant of Genghis Khan. Yes, the same Mongol conqueror who lived almost 800 years ago. An unexpected study showed that approximately 16 million people share a common Y chromosome. It was passed down through the paternal line only. This super Y line was discovered on the territory of the former Mongol Empire. But there are other such related lines. So in 1,000 years, your clone's genetic breakdown could spread out enough to wipe out half of humanity. The only consolation is that this will not happen in the near future. The human body is so complex that it's impossible to make genetic changes in its germ cells without serious violations. Yes, and scientists will still have not yet fully figured out DNA itself. So from both the biological and technical point of view, the creation of a human clone is almost impossible, as is predicting the consequences of such attempts. But then there's a third side to it all. The ethical one. In 2018, Chinese biophysicist He Zhengkui announced that he had created genetically modified embryos. He made a change in the only gene that was supposed to create immunity from HIV infection. After numerous attempts, three eggs survived and the world's first genetically modified children were born. But such experiments are prohibited in China. The scientist's actions were criticized. He was fired and then put in prison for three years. No matter how noble the goal of biophysics, the issue of genetic modification and human cloning is always condemned. All sorts of human experiments are prohibited in many countries. There are also permanent or temporary prohibitions on cloning. And the Pope has equated manipulation at the gene level with a mortal sin. So, even if you have the technical ability to create your own clone, you won't be able to do it legally. It's likely you'll end up in jail. That, and you'll probably get a message from the founder of Amazon. Some billionaires, including Jeff Bezos, have been funding companies that are looking for a longevity cure and almost all such research is done at the DNA level. In nature, there are species of organisms that create their clones. There are centenarians and even immortal beings. Scientists have learned that unusual rodents, like heterocephalus glaber, practically never get cancer and live up to 40 years. For comparison, the lifespan of a mouse is about a year and a half. And then there's the practically immortal jellyfish. It does not age and can only die by being killed. From a biological point of view, the human body is not adapted to a mortal life, but we could still exist much longer. This can indeed be facilitated by cloning. Not the person as a whole, but rather his individual organs. Scientists are already creating these in test tubes. For this, special cells of the body called stem cells are used. They are universal and capable of transforming into any of the highly specialized cells in one or another specific organ. In 2021, a heart was grown from stem cells inside a laboratory. 
Generally speaking, it looks like a pulsating mass the size of a sesame seed. But for science, this is a breakthrough. And it's quite possible that very soon here it will be possible to replace a diseased organ with a new one, grown from one's own cloned stem cells, thereby extending one's life. Technology might as well be advanced enough to grow a whole body, or at least create a biorobotic shell. And now we come to the question of how one clones one's consciousness. Many companies are also working on this. For example, Elon Musk has his Neuralink. The introduction of a chip into the brain is the first step towards creating a digital copy of consciousness. This may seem even more fantastic than body cloning, but neuroscientists argue that memory and consciousness are physical and electrochemical processes, which means that they obey the laws known to science. In fact, everything that happens in our brain is like a neural network. And if you can copy it and transfer it to a computer, then there will be a conscious mind there. But of course, this is all still theory. What are your thoughts regarding human cloning? Would you like to have your own replica? Let us know in the comments below.